she is a trailblazer. She is a trendsetter. And she <laughs> is one of the most revered names in the sports world today. Agent extraordinaire. It is the great Debbie Spander on Twitter at Deb Spander and founder and CEO of Inside Sports Advisors, where she represents sports media coaches and front office members. Now, this is not a place where we're going to just have a bunch of small talk. We're going to learn about her on a deep level, what drives her, what makes her successful, and why she's inspirational. And this is the On to Something podcast. I'm Brian Finley with Fox Sports Radio on Twitter at Brian Finley. Debbie, I really appreciate you doing this. Love the artwork behind you. And obviously, mm -hmm. those two pieces of art mean a lot to you. I, I might want to touch on that in a moment, but I first wanted to start with this. Considering how, over the course of your career, You've mentored so many, you've worked with coaches, you've built up careers into success stories. I want to know about how your husband has coached you <laughs> and been there for you as your career is flourishing. Uh, my husband, Mark Eisenberg, has definitely been here for me every step of the way. He's um, super supportive. I could not do this crazy lifestyle <laughs> as a woman, excuse me. <laughs> and a mom without him. Um, he, uh, he is encouraging everything I do. He's supporting everything I do. Um, he doesn't think I'm crazy. When I... <laughs> um, he's, he's fine when I like have to stay up till 10 or 11, two nights in a row. And he has to get our daughter dinner into bed. But um, I would say my biggest mentor in the business has actually been Arn Tellum. So Arn hired me nine and a half years ago to go to Wasserman and build a media division. They didn't have one then. And he personally selected me to come in and work with athletes who are retiring and wanted to go into media and build it out. And we built it from four clients to 50 clients in about five years. And then we started having clients who wanted to go from media into coaching, which is a pretty natural evolution these days. And uh, he looked at bringing in an outside coaching client. And he said, you know what? I think you're just as good as them. You'll do coaching as well. Wow. So uh, he was terrific and, and supported me every step of the way, guided me, let me sit in on big negotiations so I could learn. My office was right across from his. So when he was in, you know, I could hear everything going on. And, um, you know, he really helped me become the agent I am today. The agent you are today what do you think has, on top of the mentorship that you just mentioned at, at Wasserman, why is it that, Debbie, when you talk to execs, that they listen to your phone calls, that you have such a trust, you have such a level of cachet where you have such a high success rate in getting your clients into places that they deserve? Well, thank you very much. Um, I think it actually stems from my father, Art Spander, who is a sports writer and you know these days everything is coming to you straight on social and straight from the athletes but in the 70s and 80s and 90s in the height of his writing career everything came through the newspapers and you know he had a policy that if you say it's off the record it's off the record and I will not print it and so he gained the trust of you know Joe Montana and Ronnie Lott and all of the great 49ers and Warriors and Giants Will Clark, and and he would never print anything if it was off the record, but he could get the background and he could get the insight. And so I grew up in that household talking sports all the time and knowing that if somebody tells you something in trust, you don't breach it. And so then, you know, I kind of took the next step. I was a, a sports writer for a while, and then I went to law school in order to be a sports executive. But I've always, I've always kept that uh, lesson with me. You mentioned that you, for a little bit, right after college and even during college, you got into the writing game a little bit as, mm -hmm. as a journalist, but then you quickly realized that maybe your talents were better utilized elsewhere. You're still in the sports business like your father, Art. How much of what you do, Debbie, is even on a subconscious level to make your dad proud? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I don't know if what I do is to make him proud, but he gave me my passion for sports and he gave me my work ethic. And like, I learned to be successful in your career. You can't work nine to five. He, when I was growing up, he was on the road probably half the year 
covering the um, first he was a beat writer for the um, the Warriors and the A's and the Giants, and then he became the lead columnist for the San Francisco Examiner in 79. And then he covered everything from Olympics to Super Bowls to Final Fours to, you know, every big sports event in the world. So he traveled a ton. And even when he'd be in town, sometimes I wouldn't see him for like a week at a time because he'd get back so late after, say, baseball games. He'd be writing. He'd get home at midnight. I'd be asleep. I'd leave for school before he was up. But I just learned that you know, you need to, if, if you want to succeed in what you do, one, you need to be passionate about it. And two, you need to work hard and you need to have a great work ethic. And he really instilled that in me. And, you know, I know he's proud of me. I'm not sure he, he follows everything I do as like this side of the business gets more complicated, but uh, he definitely is proud of me. How have you had to adapt? You mentioned how the business has gotten more complicated, but it seems even though that's the case, you're a step ahead and you, you have this vision and this mindset of what to expect before it happens. How have you been able to tap into that from a mental standpoint and, and have the wherewithal to see where the business is going before it happens so that you stay ahead of the game? Well, I've been predicting that sports entertainment and technology were going to converge for the last 25 years since I graduated law school in 1995. And I actually helped launch a company back then that was based off of it, but there was still dial up. So it didn't really work. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's finally happening now. And so I've been predicting it for years Did I predict that it was going to be like OTT and digital. No, but I knew that we weren't going to be using our TVs. I knew that you were going to be access content and sports content off of other devices. You know, if I knew it was going to be iPads, it would have been great to be on that side and make a billion dollars, but, uh, I just knew that this was coming and that needed to, one, meet the people who were going to be leading the side of the business who could hire my clients and two, get my clients prepared, get them prepared for like, you don't have to have a TV job to be successful yeah. in sports media and the more platforms that you are, you know, adept at speaking on going on if you can do tv digital podcasting radio writing social media you're going to have a job and you have created jobs by what you're doing now as founder and ceo of inside sports advisor so you mentioned you were at wasserman now you're running the show here <laughs> and we spoke about you talked about the long hours the the arduous work that goes into your life and trying to find time for your husband and your daughter and your family and all those other things and balance might be a challenge at times, but what has the grunt work look like from a grassroots level for you, Debbie, in building up insight sports and what you're trying to accomplish? Well, the parts I hate are the uh, IT and as you know, I had a little, <laughs> a little IT hiccup this morning and, um, and the back office, the, the invoicing and the, and the chasing and the getting checks printed and that that is not my forte but i've learned opening different bank accounts and client trust accounts and um it's it's been interesting it's it's a little bit of a time suck and i can't spend that time you know with clients looking for new clients looking for new jobs but you know it all it all comes in launching a company and so far it's gone it's gone pretty smoothly other than some occasional hacks <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I know I would be so interested here, and, and, and Debbie Spander is with me, I'm Brian Fenley, is to know how your daughter has made you a better agent and even changed your perspective on the business and watching her grow and seeing maybe the little interest that she has in what you do and what she can comprehend. Yeah, I mean, at her, her interest kind of ebbs and flows and what I do. <laughs> yeah. She's in middle schooler now, so she really doesn't care as long as she gets to hang out with her friends. But she does still love going to uh, UCLA basketball games. Um, how it's helped me is one, I've learned to perform on very little sleep. <laughs> um, two, it, it, it puts things into perspective. The, the nights I am in LA and don't have to meet a client, I, I kind of block out a couple hours every night for making dinner, eating dinner, reading books, you know, getting ready for bed, just hanging out. So I'm pretty much like off the grid for a couple hours every night. We have a no, no devices at the table rule. Ah. Unless, unless we know 
between myself and Mark, unless there's like an urgent call or text that we're waiting for. We, we keep things off the table and we actually force people to talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. I mean, it, it keeps us all grounded. And then the third thing is, and, and I was just on a Zoom last night with the Sports Lawyers Association about the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Mm -hmm. And it, it's kind of a good and bad. I mean, the good news is there are women doing many more jobs in sports than we were doing even 30 years ago when I graduated. When I graduated Stanford, I wanted to be a sportscaster, but there were so few women doing it. I was like, well, I'll go to law school and get into the business side of sports. Um, now there are, you know, women general counsels, there's women moving up, some CFOs, the trailblazers have the first woman trainer. Wow. But what we were talking about is it's still first. Yeah. You know, like Amy Trask is the first woman CEO, COO, well, she was CEO of the Raiders and now CEO of the big three. They're just, there still aren't a lot. We're still blazing those trails. And it's kind of frustrating that in this big discussion yesterday with 50, 100 members of sports lawyers that we're still saying this person is the first and that person is the first. But on the other hand, at least there are the first and I can show her, hey, you can do whatever you want. You may have to fight for it, but you know, she sees women in so many roles, especially as vice president of the United States. And that gives her the idea that, that all jobs, all opportunities are open to women, which, you know, when my mother graduated UCLA in 1960, they weren't. She was Phi Beta Kappa and her choices were be a secretary, a dental hygienist, or a teacher. So she became a Spanish teacher. So things have progressed, but it's sort of a slow progression in, yes. in a way. But what you have done, Debbie, is, is blaze this trail. And as you were talking about coming out of UCLA Law School, there weren't a lot of people in positions that you were aiming to get to. So how have you had to rely on your mental toughness at times? When has that been most necessary? When here you are being a pioneer and realizing that you don't have people in front of you to show you the way. And, and it's a little more than that. It's not even people showing me the way. It's also um, there weren't any jobs <laughs> doing what I wanted to do. So my friends were all interviewing with, with law firms and getting cushy summer internships where you got paid a lot of money and learned a little and went to parties. And I interned for a startup. <laughs> I interned for a startup company. Um, making $12 an hour and um, doing some deals with the NFL and the NFL PA as the PA recertified in the early nineties after the white case, but I got to do a deal with Roger Goodell. So, I mean, oh. I learned, I, I, I had to fight and scratch and claw and take these different jobs, but I learned a lot. And then I went to work for Mady Olivo who had a firm called Law Sports, which is now part of Aaron Fox. And I did deals for the World Pro Ski Tour and for wow. LPGA events and for the Ice Capades, like these smaller sports uh, entities, but you're still learning to negotiate and you're, you're learning the issues that are important. And then from there, I went to Fox Sports. And by those smaller ventures that you, you talked about as you're building, you're also growing those relationships with people. And I'm sure that more than anything in what you've done, the importance of relationships and, and how it's not just that you meet somebody, but it's cultivating those relationships and preserving those relationships and staying in touch with people. What is your approach, Debbie, in terms of cultivating relationships and, and making sure that, you know, that there are people who you've met and known 15, 20 years ago, and you stay in touch with them because it ends up being a very fruitful thing in terms of Maybe they have a client that goes to you. Maybe you can help them. And obviously, at this, the, the core of it all is that you know how to get relationships done. Yeah, no, I realized when I transitioned from being a sports lawyer to a sports agent that all the people I'd met over the previous 20 years, all of my networking wow. was finally coming to fruit. Like I, I would go to the Super Bowl with my dad or, her, or Fox Sports or whoever every year. And, you know, I wasn't. I was a lawyer for Fox Sports, so I wasn't really needing these relationships, but I was building them. And then once I became an agent, all of a sudden I had this fantastic Rolodex and, and it seemed like the whole 20 years came together and this is what I was meant to do. 
Um, the past two years have been difficult because seeing people in person is really important to cultivating relationships. I did have a rule the first six months of COVID where I would text somebody every day, whether it was a personal friend or a business friend, and just keep in touch with people when everything was shut down and, you know, business sports weren't going, business was a little slow, and uh, people were depressed. So that kept things going, and I'm really excited that Super Bowl is in L.A. next week because everyone is coming here finally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is your schedule? I mean, t- you're going to be so busy a- as we get ready for Super Bowl. What does it look like being in the world of Debbie Spander Super Bowl week and all that you're going to do? Um, well, it started Monday with lots of emails and texts, especially because one of my clients is Jim Everett. So everybody wants Jim Everett. So now it's just um, fielding the incoming requests reaching out to some outgoing ones. I think I have about eight clients who will be here and um, figuring out what their schedules are for their existing media jobs. And then are there other things they can do on Radio Row? Bringing Jim around, Jim's got luncheons and paid opportunities and he's gonna be doing a lot of local media, making sure there's car services and working on schedules. And uh, then figuring out what parties they want to go to and trying to get them on the list and get them to the right ones. And, you know, the big issue with L.A. is that some things are downtown and some things are on the west side. And people who don't live here probably won't have figured in traffic. Yes. So <laughs> it'll 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 um, nothing will go exactly as planned next week. But right now it's just working on everybody's opportunities and getting their um, their schedules together what do you get as far as the most fulfillment in having your clients and see them succeed what do you take debbie out of seeing them grow and what to you is the most rewarding part of that that's why i do this job when, when i get frustrated and i think oh, it'd be easier to go back to a network and just work for it's 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 when you get the clients the jobs they've been wanting, or you get them promotions they've been wanting. Um, it's just, it's so fulfilling and it's so exciting. And um, anything from like Antoine Jameson going from being a part-time Lakers broadcaster, then he started doing some scouting for them on the side and decided like, Dad, this is, this is what I want to do. I want to do front office. So four years later, he's now senior director of pro personnel of the Wizards. Wow. So like, this is what he wanted to do. And we found him the right job or like my, my favorite moment of the past year was client Adnisha Curry, who was an assistant in um, men's NCAA basketball for the past four years and was in been assistant in, in college basketball and overseas for 15 years. And we got her job with the Portland trailblazers. Wow. And she's the, uh, she's the head of player development there. And she screamed when I told her. I mean, it's it was so amazing. She was so happy. And then just to watch her grow these past six months, she's already become like they've already moved her up there. She's mentoring players. She's mentoring coaches. There's been like some great social media on her. So that that's why I do this. This was what it's all about. How do you celebrate those successes personally? <laughs> have a glass of wine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hopefully I get, you know, now that things are opening up, I get to see the clients. I flew up to, I flew up to Portland and spent a couple nights up there and we had a great dinner with good white wine. And, uh, <laughs> and then I went to the game the next night and then, you know, post game snacks or whatever, everything closes down in Portland, like 10. It's so weird still. It's a super early city since COVID. So there's like one restaurant open after <laughs> games, but, uh, You know, some of my clients, like Brian Scalabrini, we got him a great new deal with NBC Boston, super happy, but I have not actually seen him in person since. Wow. And then just two more questions. Debbie Spander is with me. I'm Brian Fenley. How you view social media to scout out talent as well? Yep. I do. Um, You need to find, I mean, I kind of do two things. I, for uh, athletes, I really watch post-game interviews and what they're doing on social and who's speaking well and who has like that sparkle in their eye when they're doing media stuff. And I'm like, they're going to be, they're going to be good in the media, even if it's 10 years, you know, let's keep an eye on them. Like I knew Draymond Green was going to be great in the media and he just signed, you know, a deal with Turner. Um, And then for, for non-athletes, it's just 
getting out there and seeing who's doing what and uh, if I think they have talent to grow. Finding Annie Agar, what was that like from your perspective? You know, she was a, she was an unemployed uh, sports reporter in Grand Rapids, Michigan, who had covered a lot of college football and other things, and there was nothing going on, so she had to move home. And she started making these fake Zoom calls between between conferences and college teams and then NFL teams, and they were hilarious. They were really funny, and I just started noticing and watching. And then my client, Stuart Mandel, who runs the college football vertical of The Athletic, said, hey, I'm going to do an interview on her. Do you want to meet her and find out if she has an agent? I was like, absolutely. So he asked her, and she didn't and asked if she'd be interested in talking to me, and she was. But then, because she was so young, I actually had a Zoom with her parents, too, <laughs> <laughs> which was fine. And, you know, and I told her the truth. I said, look, there's not going to be there's not going to be a broadcasting job for you the rest of this year. Just stuff is, is too locked down. And when ESPN and people start broadcasting again, they're going to bring back their people who they, who they owe dates to. But I think we can get you some good, fun marketing opportunities. This is 2020, the rest of this year, and we'll get you a broadcasting job, a full-time job next year. And that's exactly what happened. We, we did lots of, you know, like fan duel and Super Bowl squares and things like that. And I got her this great deal with Microsoft Education, where she does TikToks, and they're actually, wow. I think, nominated for a Webby or whatever those awards are. And then um, last spring, I got her to uh, Bally Sports, where Dave Morgan, I'm not sure if you've met him through the years, he ran, ran uh, Yahoo Sports and other things, they're bringing back so the Valley sports are all the Fox sports regionals that got sold to Sinclair. So they're building a huge digital presence nationally around the 41 teams that they have rights to. So she is their NFL insider wow. and uh, she, she's still doing her great zoom calls, but also does, you know, some more serious breakdowns of what's going on in the NFL. And she's actually out at Super Bowl already working. So you'll get to see her. Definitely. I already have. Yeah. Yeah, we've already we've already gone to a UCLA game and had some business dinners and she's um she's working out with a, a trainer this week who's training guys for the draft. Wow. So that's that's what she's doing all this week. And then next week she'll be on Radio Row all week. It's so fun to see the way that she has arisen and how you've tapped into that. That is one of the many success stories for you, Debbie Spander. I'm Brian Fanley. Last question for you. The artwork behind you. We see Hank Aaron, we see John Wooden, we see Bill Walden the influence that those three men have had on your life, how would you begin to put that into words? Well, my dad um, went to UCLA and was the sports editor of the Daily Bruin when John Wooden couldn't win. Wow. <laughs> Back then only one, I think it was Pac-8 team could go to the tournament every year and Cal was the dominant one. And they said he couldn't win, but luckily they kept him around for a few year, more years and he started winning. So I, of course, don't remember it, but my mom claims my dad held me up in front of the TV when I was about a month old watching UCLA win the national championship in, in 69. And so what has just always been a part of my life. And then in 95 was my third year of law school and we all went to the final four in Seattle and my dad got to interview Wooden, like walking off the floor, and it was just like full circle. And then the day before our wedding, my husband's also was also good friends with Wooden, and we have you know Woodenisms all around the house. Wow. And so the day or two days before my wedding, my dad and, and husband spent like three hours at his condo in Encino. What did they tell you that experience was like? <laughs> it's just you know the, you, he's just so so full of wisdom just about life, not just about sports. And then Hank Aaron, you know, obviously is an amazing, amazing baseball player, but he also had to go through a lot of racism and a lot of um, crap to succeed in what he was doing. And just, I've always admired him and a uh, board I'm on here in LA, WSA, West Coast Sports Associates, where we fund after school sports programs for about 5,000 kids a year wow. in inner city LA. He came and was our honoree one year, and I got to spend a whole night with him, and it was just fantastic. One of the many influences in your life, and how many people you yourself, Debbie, have influenced in a positive way, and want people to realize how many those are because 
this is a conversation dedicated for people to see just all the awesome work you do and why you are so inspirational. Debbie Spander, founder, CEO, Inside Sports Advisors, doing incredible work, has a very busy Super Bowl week coming up. I'm Brian Fenley with Fox Sports Radio. Debbie, thanks so much for making the time. This was really fun learning about not just you professionally, but personally as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Brian.